Hello, this is Dr. Judson Brandeis, and I'm coming to you from my office in San Ramon, California. A lot of my patients ask me about testosterone. Testosterone is a critically important hormone for men. It's made by the testicle, and it gives us energy and manliness. And when we're younger, in our 20s, it's up around eight or 900. But as we age, like so many things, it declines. So by the time you hit 50, it may be down around 400. By the time you hit 70, it may be around 200 or 250. And what that does is it decreases our libido, decreases our energy, decreases our mood. Now, do you have to have a testosterone of a 70 year old if you're 70? And the answer is no. So what does testosterone do for you? Well, first of all, it improves your mood. It gives you energy. It helps you build muscle. It helps you reduce fat. It increases your libido. So if you have low testosterone levels, like the average testosterone for a 70 year old around 250 to 300, your mood will be worse. You'll be grumpy. You'll put on belly fat. You, it'll be harder to, for you to build muscle, harder for you to get up the energy to go to the gym. You won't feel like having sex. Now, what happens if you come to my office and I boost your testosterone up to the level of it was when you were 20 or 25? Well, first of all, your mental sharpness will be better. You'll be able to build muscle. You'll be able to get rid of fat. Testosterone is a heart healthy hormone. You'll have more libido and you'll have better erectile function. Okay, testosterone exists in two different forms. So when you get your lab report back, I'm gonna to talk to you about your total testosterone, but also your free testosterone. So free testosterone is the testosterone that's available to be bound, meaning it binds to the receptor and actually activates the things that testosterone activates. So a lot of folks like analogies. And so I, free testosterone to me is kind of like, okay, when you're younger, you're looking for a girlfriend, you go to the bar. So if you go to the first bar and there are 100 women, you're like pretty pumped. But if all of those women are already bound, already married, then you're gonna leave that bar, you're gonna go to the next bar. The next bar only has 15 women, but all those women are single. That's the bar that you wanna stay at because those women are available and not bound. So that's kind of like free testosterone as opposed to the married women, which are like bound testosterone. Now, testosterone binds to either albumin, which is a protein or sex hormone binding globulin. So SHBG, and you may see that on your lab report as well. As you get older, your levels of SHBG go up. So as the levels of total testosterone go down, the level of free testosterone go down faster because the levels of SHBG are going up as you age. So you can see this testosterone is available to bind to the receptor, but when testosterone is bound to SHBG, it can't bind to the receptor because it's being enveloped by this larger protein. The hypothalamus, which is in your brain, produces GnRH, gonadotropin-releasing hormone, which goes to the pituitary, and the pituitary re releases two things, luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone. FSH tells your testicle to make sperm. LH tells your testicle to make testosterone. When the testosterone is made, there's a feedback loop that goes back to the pituitary and goes back to the hypothalamus. Okay, but the testosterone that's made goes into your body and a couple of different things happen. Most of the testosterone goes directly to the muscle and to the testosterone receptors throughout your body. Some of the testosterone is converted into dihydrotestosterone, which then goes to the prostate and the skin. There's a slightly different androgen or testosterone receptor in those places. And so if you're taking Propecia, Propecia is a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. It blocks the conversion of testosterone to DHT. And so DHT is what causes all those bad things that happen to us as we get older, like 
enlarged prostate, losing hair on the, your head, you get the ear hairs, the nose hairs, all those bad things that you don't want. If you block the conversion of T to DHT, you reduce those things. Now, one other thing that testosterone does is it gets converted into estrogen, right? By something called aromatase. And if you boost testosterone too much, then you're gonna get too much estrogen. Okay, we're all taught like, Men are from Mars and women are from, that's Mars, and women are from Venus, okay? And so Mars and Venus are like, you know, way, way different. But in reality, this is testosterone, that's estrogen. They're almost exactly the same molecule. The only difference between testosterone and estrogen is this one hydrogen molecule. And hydrogen is only one electron, one neutron, and one proton. So the smallest unit of matter is the difference between estrogen and testosterone. And so it's easy for your body to aromatize testosterone into estrogen. Okay, so then people are like, well, you know, I want bioidentical hormones or I want synthetic hormones. Actually, most people don't want synthetic hormones, but anyway, most people don't know the difference between what a bioidentical hormone is and a synthetic hormone. Okay, this is natural testosterone. This is the chemical structure of natural testosterone. And the patent for natural testosterone is held by God. And God allows everyone to use testosterone. But the problem is that pharmaceutical companies can't make money on bioidentical natural testosterone. Compounding pharmacies make bioidentical natural testosterone. But pharmaceutical companies like Merck and Pfizer and all those people, since they can't have the patent on it, they can't make money on it. So what they do is they create things like testosterone cypionate or testosterone ethanate that you can inject or you can put across through the skin. They can make money on it. And if you look at the chemical structure, the binding site of these molecules is exactly the same as the binding site for natural testosterone, but the rest of the molecules are different so that they can be patented. I prefer when I'm replacing testosterone in my patients to use a natural bioidentical hormone. Okay, so how do we replace testosterone? Okay, one way you can do it is through injections. Okay, through shots in the leg or the butt, has to go intramuscular. What that will do, and this is the least expensive way, typically it's around three to $500 a year. What this will do is it will give you a high peak It'll go up into 1,000 or 1,500, and then a drop, and then a peak, and then a drop. So it's kind of like a roller coaster. So if my patients are taking it because they're weekend warriors, we'll have them take it before, you know, on Friday. So they have it on Saturday or Sunday when they're playing pickleball or golf. And if they're uh, taking it to do really well at work, then we'll have them inject themselves Sunday night so that they get really high levels on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so on and so forth. Okay, it, this is a non-bioidentical hormone and uh, you get high levels, then low levels, high levels, then low levels. Okay, another option is a gel, right? A transdermal. The thing is you can't take testosterone as a pill because it gets absorbed by the liver and the liver metabolizes it before it gets into your body. So you have to get it straight into the bloodstream so it avoids a first pass metabolism in the liver. So you can put it on the skin. The problem is testosterone is a relatively big molecule. Like think of water, right? H2O, you take a bath. Not that much water gets absorbed into your body. So now think of testosterone, which is a much bigger molecule than water. How much testosterone really gets absorbed through your skin? You know, it's only a few percentage out of say 100 grams that you might put on your skin. Only a few grams are actually get absorbed into your body. And so the levels that, in my experience, the levels that you get in your patients are not that high, maybe four or 500 if you're lucky, 600. And a clinical difference that I see in my patients is only when they get up above 750 or 800. Gosh, I gotta remember how to do this. Okay, so another option, the option that I really like and I've had really good success with my patients is to use testosterone pellets. Okay, testosterone pellets are like little grains of rice. And what we do is we make a tiny little incision 
in the gluteus muscles, so just on the side of the buttock where you have a little fat pad. And I have a technique where it, patients don't even really feel the initial uh, injection. And then what we do is we slip those little pellets into what's called a subcutaneous fat pad. And those basically dissolve over a period of four to six months. So two to three times a year, as opposed to injecting yourself once a week or putting a cream on every single day, two to three times a year, you come in, you get these pellets placed. Uh, we don't even use a stitch. We just use a steri strip, which is a type of Band-Aid. Um, there's really no limitations on activity except maybe going into a swimming pool for a couple of days and going bike riding for a week. Uh, but patients tolerate this really well. It gives a really nice consistent level. The way it gives a consistent level, it's kind of interesting. They put the testosterone crystals in a little uh, tiny canister and then they put little holes in that tiny canister and that um, determines how slowly the drug elutes or leaves the, the canister. So it's kind of like, think of it this way. You go to the Warriors game, if you're lucky enough to score tickets, although this year they're terrible, so um, you may not be so lucky to go this year, but say you went last year. They had a lot of exits, so at the end of the game, people could leave really quickly, but say you only had like one or two exits, it would take a long time for all the people that went to the Warriors game to leave. And so that's what they do with these um, little canisters is when you, they get put in the glutes, there are only a couple tiny little holes and it's so oh, slowly over time, these canisters release the testosterone into the subcutaneous fat and that's why you get high, consistently high levels for a long period of time. I think that's all I have for today, uh, but I hope you learned a little bit about testosterone and my personal approach, and I hope to be seeing you soon. Thank you very much.